I heard there was a bit of a party last night. Yeah. A few people might be a bit dusty. Hey, look, I think the leader leads from the front uh, here, so I, I, I'm, I'm not surprised. Hey, so here's the thing. I'll bring the energy then, okay? Is that cool? Yeah. Cool. Next, first thing you have to do for me is raise your right hand. Raise your right hand, put it on the person next to you, and say, bugger, he's interactive. <laughs> Guys, there's two ways to learn. How many ways to learn? Great. Wasn't a trick question. First way is I could stand here and chalk and talk. Who went to school for not very long like me? Pretty boring, right? Or we can get down here and we can have a conversation. Who's up for that? Awesome. We're going to have a conversation. We're going to have some fun today. Here's our agenda. We're going to talk about the big picture. Um, we're going to talk about digital marketing, uh, but that's a huge topic. So I've, I, I've pinned it down to a couple of things that we're going to go through. And one is video influence. I, I really believe we're in a time right now uh, where you can take an opportunity to get in front of the market with video. Okay. I'm going to show you a framework, going to show you a bunch of things that you can do. Uh, to get ahead of that. So we're going to go through that. We'll touch a little bit on AI. Sorry, I only have 60 minutes. That's a 90-minute that's presentation. Uh, actually flying to Miami on Saturday to learn more about AI. It's a massive topic for businesses. I'm going to share a content framework with you. We've got 10 frameworks we're going to use. I'm going to give you one. I'm going to put it on that whiteboard. You're going to use it to create content. If we get enough time, you're going to shoot a video here today. Is that cool? Awesome. Right. My goal for you is real simple. I want to give you some confidence and some clarity around these digital platforms uh, and I'm going to give you the confidence to then be curious, okay? I'm going to actually give you a new job title today. Who wants another job title? I'll give you a part-time one. Who wants that? You're going to need it in this market. I want you to be a part-time marketer. Marketers are generally curious, right? So marketers will go, why are they doing that? What's, what, what's happening over there? How could I do that, okay? And I think that's the market we're in where you need to be curious, okay? So wear a part-time marketer's hat and start to think and look at things and go, hmm, how could I create a story out of that? How could I find some inspiration in that? Okay, so part-time market. I'm going to give you some confidence to wear that job title. Then I'm going to give you the confidence to take some courage uh, to start using video. Because I know for a lot of people, it's actually quite scary. Uh, and there'll be people in the room already who have already turned off to the, to the sound of shooting a video and putting it online. Hey, so Digital Influence is my company. Um, this is our purpose, to influence, educate, and inspire growth together. Uh, we're a team of, I think, 12 now around the world. Uh, we've got an office in the city. We just won this award. We just helped. Who, who knows what Kaiser Brew Garden? Yeah, we just won this award for them. Best marketed establishment in New Zealand. How cool is that? The coolest part about that is they only use digital. Only use digital. And some of what we're going to teach you today, uh, that we've been teaching them. Okay, so this, this, this stuff works. I'm uh, really proud to, to work with those guys. Uh, we have a podcast. At some stage, when people are on, we get to number one in New Zealand for marketing. We've had some amazing people on that podcast. Mike James, Kevin Eater, Brent Selwyn, Paul Wright. You guys all know Paul Wright, right? This, if you haven't listened to this podcast, this is a fascinating story of your industry and the guy that was involved starting it. Um, I'll put a, a screen up at the end now where you can... Take a shot of it and it will link you straight through to our podcast. But I reckon everyone, if you're in your industry, should listen to this. It's a really, who actually has listened to it? A couple of people. It's a great story, right? Uh, and then there's another one that you probably should listen to. Um, there's a guy called Tony Jenkins. Fair enough. So, so I won't ask or embarrass you if, if you have not listened to, like, listened to this one, but a really good insight. Uh, what I love about Tony... What, what's his, one of his favorite sayings? How good is that? And put the fizz into it. He likes to put the fizz in, right? We give him a hard time at the gym. Short story about Tony this morning. He was wearing boxing gloves. And uh, he gets on the old punching bag. And I always say to him, who are you fighting today? Um, are you fighting Ray White? But this morning, I think it was Mike Perra because he was actually going for it. Um, and uh, 45 second rounds, though, you do really well. Susan. Um, so, okay. Let's go back to the future a little bit. Uh, before we get into the topic. So I've been doing digital marketing probably now for 20 something years. I was in San Diego, uh, 217, and a guy um, put this slide up, uh, Ryan Dice, and I thought it was really interesting because I'd gone through this, okay, when, when it came to digital marketing. So there's five phases, 1994, 2000, the discovery phase, 21, uh, 2001, 2019, 2019, sorry, proliferation, then standardization, consolidation, and then innovation and disruption. Um, 
this is really interesting. So in phase one, and I really remember this, uh, Google Ads started coming out because um, they were called Google AdWords back in the day. Uh, you could actually get, uh, have this banner, and if you clicked on it, you'd earn a cent. It was pretty cool. I had one of those. The only thing is, I had to get my mum to get off the phone so I could use the, the dial up to, to get this ad to run. So, so um, but this here was a really interesting time. Uh, and it really was the wild, wild west back in the day. We were running ads. You could buy ads for a cent uh, off Google Ads. It was, it was, it was crazy. Um, you know, now we have clients paying $38 a click. Uh, when someone clicks on their ad, it's $38. You think that's expensive, but when you run the numbers, it's actually really profitable. So um, that, is, that is when it started. Uh, the Facebook came out in 2004, right? The Facebook. Pretty, pretty crazy that that was when it, when it all started. Uh, this is where the game changed, I reckon. Um, they released the first smartphone uh, and you could start running ads to people's mobile phones. To, to, that's actually not that long ago, right? Um, I remember doing seminars and we'd ask people, who here has a smartphone? No one would put their hands up, you know? Uh, now, if you ask it, it's a stupid question, right? Everyone has a phone in their pocket um, and probably been on it already a thousand times this morning. Standardization started to happen. They brought in a thing called the, uh, the quality score with Google. Um, and they actually brought out a thing called the Google Slap. Uh, and this is what I always tell people. You've got to understand whose uh, sandpit you're playing in when it comes to digital marketing or any sort of marketing. Uh, Google, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, whoever it is, they own those platforms. So what happened with Google there is overnight, they put people's prices up. That generally went from about five cents a click to 50 cents a click. And then they banned a whole bunch of accounts, okay? They didn't actually really care. Uh, Facebook's kind of doing the same. Uh, throughout the years. So you really understand that the big companies, and this is where it led to consolidation, really own these platforms as far as advertising spend. The big companies dominate, okay? So if you can, make sure you're always building your own email list, your own messenger marketing list. It's so important that you're building your own platforms um, as well as building your platforms on, on their platforms, okay? Uh, and then five, well, they didn't actually get to that. So um, I didn't go back to that seminar because what, what happened? 2000 COVID, yeah. But I've done my own research since, and I think here's the things that you need to work on now. You probably wanna write this down, mobile first, okay? I think mobile first is a big thing that you need to be looking at when you're running your marketing campaigns. You should focus everything on mobile. Why would I say that? Everyone's on it, you know? Go and watch people's behaviors. I was speaking at the university probably a month ago, and um, the lecturer guy was up there, and he had 200 slides with heaps of writing on them. The kids were getting bored. 40 of them were all on their phones, you know? They're all on their phones inside a lecture. That just wouldn't have happened back in my day. Well, not in my day, because I didn't go to university. But, but, but everyone's on their mobile phone. It's, that's where it's gone, right? So plan your campaigns around mobile, okay? Video first, okay? I really believe this is the opportunity, is video first. Um, and you'll start to see, uh, when you get into this world around shooting video and short film video content, that you can, you can actually build trust uh, and get people to know, like, and, and, and trust you faster. We'll give you a framework on, on how to do that. Uh, and then AI first. I really believe AI is starting to change the way uh, uh, things are happening out there. You know, the explosion of ChatGPT uh, is probably the first and the real shallow part of where AI is. Some parts of it are really, really scary. Uh, we actually did a presentation in this room to our clients uh, a 90 minute presentation on it. My, my goal with AI right now for you is to start having that conversation with yourself, with your teams uh, around, and here's, here's what I challenge you to do. Find one hour you can get back a week using AI. Is that cool? One hour. How do you use AI to get yourself one hour back? We did a, we did a, a thing, we actually still got it going now in our business. I've challenged all my team to get an hour back. For every hour they can document and show me that they've got an hour back, We'll put $500 into the, the, the bonus fund at the end of the year, okay? Document, show me how you get an hour back. We might go on a photo shoot. Um, Sarah, who's not here today, go on a photo shoot. We might shoot 200 photos in a photo shoot. We, before, had to go through all those photos and see what, which were the good ones. Now AI does that for us in 10 seconds, okay? We got that hour back. That's $500, okay? AI, make sure AI is your tool, is your assistant, okay? That would be the thing I would... I would want to leave you with as far as AI. Use it, but look look at where you can leverage it to make it your partner.
okay? By the way, you can ask me any questions. Here's the opportunity though. I really believe this is the opportunity for you guys. Because if I say the word soft drink, what brand do you think of? Coke, LMP? Cool, Coke. If I say the word fast food, what brand do you think of? Someone here likes McDonald's. So love. McDonald's. How did that happen? How do they own your mind share? Okay. It's weird though. They own it. Kids? Yeah? Not that many kids in the room. You already said it. What if what about if I say what about if I say car yards in Christchurch? What if I say massage therapy Christchurch? What if I say architects in Christchurch? What if I say heat pump specialists in Christchurch? Okay, thanks, Stephen. What if I say storage in Christchurch? Cool, couple of brands. But it's not as clear cut, right? No one really owns, for those keywords, owns your mind share. Unlike Coke and McDonald's, you went straight to it, right? Yeah, so they own your mind share, right? How good's that? Some companies already own your mind share. That is your opportunity. Who's going to own the mind share? For what you do in the industry to grow the market share you've got to grow the mind share okay that is your opportunity how are we going to do that okay because here's the thing here's the good news how much money did coke spend to own your mind share billions right but they own it what about what about mcdonald's how much did they spend billions of dollars i remember going on the variety bash uh, and going out to uh, Ashburton with a whole bunch of trucks and stuff and raising money. And Ronald McDonald, no, sorry, we're at the, um, the Burton military camp. And Ronald McDonald comes out and all these kids just ran to him. And I was like, they don't even have a McDonald's out here. But that was the power of what that association they've connected it to, right? They've connected a feeling and an association to it. And, and the good news is, you know, you can do the same. Okay. So who here has video equipment here with them today? Everyone has it, right? Everyone has video equipment in their pocket. This is the real opportunity now, right? You're your own media. Does everyone realize that? You're actually your own media. You can create content using this. And, and the equipment in here is better than like anything you've probably ever existed when it comes to, com when it comes to video equipment. It can do everything that you need it to do, right? What I want to talk about though is what are some of the biggest problems that you guys have when it comes to creating content? Most people say what to say, don't they? What do I say? I've got nothing to say. Who gets blank and goes, oh, I don't know what to say, you know? And uh, actually, I don't actually know how to say it, okay? We get this all the time, we don't know how to say it, or when to say it, or how to get people engaged. All right, I've got a framework for you. If you want to, I want you to get your pens out if you've got pens. And here's a real simple framework. I'm going to give you one theme, three cool messages, 10 topics. Is that cool? Okay, write them down. I'll give you an example of a th what a theme could be. I was talking to um, a business coach who coaches uh, restaurants. He takes them from good to great. Uh, he's one of the best in New Zealand at coaching hospitality uh, venues. So we talked about his one could be uh, helping them go from good to great. That's his theme, okay? Then you have three topics out here, one here, or core message, or so I should say. And we talked about people and culture, processes and processes, and finance, okay? That's, that's what, he's got the theme, and then he's got three uh, core, core messages. What could you guys have here? Actually, I want to give it to you. Because what, what is Harcourt's famous for, I believe? Yeah, who said it? Auctions. You guys are famous. You're one of the best in, or the best. Okay? So your theme is going to be auctions for this. All right? Now, what are, what are three core messages uh, or core that you could talk about when it comes to auctions? I'm going to give you the first one. I'm going to give you the first one. Auction day experience. Why would I give you that topic as a, uh, as a topic? Auction day experience. Who here, silly question, in the last six months has sold one house? Really bad if you don't put your hand up in this one, guys. Seriously. 
Well, as yeah, as an agent. Okay, who's who? Keep your hands up. Poop, keep your hands up if you sold two, three, four. Put them right up. Five, six. So you've actually sold quite a few, right? Zenny, when you sell a house, how do you feel when you're dealing with someone? Give me some words that you go to. Elated. But what about when you start that experience? Yep. What else? Are you confident in your process? Yeah, confident. Who else is confident when they're selling a house? Who knows what they're doing? Cool. When someone comes to you to buy or sell a house, how many transactions have they done? How do you think they feel? Yeah. It's a biggie, right? How do you think they feel? And I think that's the, the thing I want to get you across today to you guys is you guys are experts, right? And But there's a whole bunch of people out there that aren't on this topic. And they have concerns, they have anxieties, they have, they have, are we gonna get ripped off here? Is this a good deal for us? Is this the school right school zone? Can I trust the agent? There's a whole bunch of stuff that they're feeling, right? And I want you to understand when you're starting to create video content that you need to get into those feelings. Guys, I know that's a tough one, but hey, you know, these are real people that you need to come across. Honestly, they don't really care if it's three or four bedroom, blah, 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 when you're talking on video. They want to know how you're going to help them, how you're going to actually get across, get them across the line. So auction day experience. Now, I'm going to give you 10 topics, for auction day experience. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's 10, there we go. What's, here, here's their first one, a frequently asked question. If you're creating a video on an auction day experience, what's, one frequently asked question that you get. Cool, brilliant. Could you shoot a video on that, Luke? Brilliant. There's one video done. How good's that? There's another video done. One video, one topic, one video. We got it? The next one is a should ask question. As an expert, you know what they should be asking you, but they're not. You know, answering these questions, what happens? What happens to them? What happens to Mindshare? Expert, okay? No one is telling anybody any of this stuff, right? Would you agree? What are you all going on about? Three bedrooms, nice house. Sorry to be sarcastic, but this is what people want to know. Okay, let's go to the next one. Testimonial reviews. Could you create a video out of testimonial reviews? You can have the client doing it. Or you could read the review and get someone to film you doing it. How cool would that be? Instead of you putting your rate, and it's still cool to keep doing that, but do this. Hey, we're dealing with this lovely lady, lovely couple. Um, they sent us a really good review. Just going to read it out for you, blah, 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 blah. How much better is that? Feelings. People are seeing you. They're seeing you excited by this sort of stuff. We got Novus to start to do this. They're a client of ours. You know, shall she crack? The guys started reading these reviews. And I tell you what, people engage with them, you know? And it might only be your mum and your dad to start with, but it does matter, okay? The next one is customer service. Here's the thing I want you to explain. What happens next? Because there's a lot of things that people don't know about what happens next. Okay, what happens once I've sold the house or I've bought the house? What happens next? Can you see if you've never bought a property before, there'd be a bit of, I don't know, but do you guys know? Do you guys, the guys, you know what happens next, right? Let them in. If you could add a bit of what's next, how cool is that, right? This one's easy. One tip. So you've got, here, here's the thing, team. You guys have got a world of knowledge in this head, right? I just want you to share some of it. And the reason I want you to share some of it, because I want you to pull people closer to you, okay? I want them to come into your world. So when they think real estate agent in this area, this area, this area, who are they going to think about? They, you're going to be on that shopping list. That's what I want for you, right? That's why we're going to, that's why we're going to create these videos. Uh, what's a common mistake? Another great video. Common mistake. Yeah, it's a common mistake. We all make mistakes. What's a common one? This gets made in real estate, you know? Over appraising, cool, common mistake, great video, right? And then how you fix it. 
cool thing about some of these videos, you could actually create series of them. You know, you could create one series, video one, video two, video three, create a series of these videos. Really good for positioning. Um, one of my favorites is personal stories. Josh, that's why I asked you before. You know, share your personal stories about maybe even a little bit about the day in the life um, of what goes on. Uh, just remember, this, this is their first transaction, you know? They want to know, like, and trust you. Video builds know, like, and trust, okay? There's a framework that we have for it. Um, and, and one of the first ones to build, get people to know you is you want to share your character, okay? Um, that's a whole nother topic on, on how to do it, but you need to show your character, okay? One of the great ways to do that is video. Uh, to, build, to build like, uh, you need to share chemistry, okay? Uh, chemistry is a very, very important thing on video. Who here has a dog? Who uses the dog in their marketing? You should. Why? Why do I say that? People who love dogs, love dogs. You go to an open home and, and, and you go and see their dog because you love dogs. What are they going to think about you? You're a dog lover. You've got an instant connection. If I'm an agent and I come in there and the dog's there and I'm, hey, and talk to the dog. What do the people automatically think? It's chemistry, guys. Okay? So, sublimably, use your dog. Okay? Uh, the other one there is is to build trust, you must demonstrate credibility. Okay? So, you got to know what you're doing. That's where should ask questions come in. Uh, local focus. This is a lot of content, guys, but I'm going to give you some stuff that you can just take away. But local focus. I don't believe enough um, focus from an agent level is put on the surroundings of what, what hey, just got a gr just shooting a video. Just got a great coffee from uh, the auction house. It's a really good, good, good coffee. So if you're moving into the island area, this is a place to be. Your kids will love it. Uh, blah 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 blah. Local focus, right? Real simple video to shoot, but it shows that you're more than just you know uh, a faceless person. You're actually giving people insights. The last one is what you love. What do you love about this industry? Could you create a video on that? I'd say also what you love outside of the industry. What do you like doing? Share a little bit of insights. What do you do? You know, what do you do on your daily? Do you go motorbike riding? Do you go mountain bike riding? Do you like surfing? Do you like art? Share a little bit. What, why would I get people to do that? Create a personality. Humanize everything, right? Remember, this is media. This thing is media. Just like if you had those cameras following you around all day, or if you were shooting the news, this is media. You are media now, okay? So... Is that cool? Is that a good framework? Who's got some stuff that they could actually create if they put their their their, their, their thinking down, right? Because this is the this is the hard part when it comes to creating content. You know, lots of people just go, oh, put into AI, blah, blah, blah. But they're gonna create blah, 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 blah. This is about passion and heart. This is about taking your experience and remember who you're talking to. You're talking to someone who is what? Feeling nervous, feeling unsure. You know, worrying about, hey, is this the right decision? You guys don't have any of that because you're so confident in what you're doing. You know they're in, they, you know personally they're in safe hands. They don't know that yet, right? Okay. So when you're shooting this sort of stuff, make sure that you're that you're coming from that place. Okay, cool. Keep moving. Okay, one thing, three cool messages, ten topics. Here's it in action. Okay, so this gentleman here, uh, Greg, owns a company called Car Money. His theme here is same you, lower repayments. So what happened during lockdown, uh, no one would lend any money. So his business was nearly nearly bust. Uh, he was using Google Ads. He came to us. Um, he's actually one of my best friends. Uh, and you know what it's like dealing with one of your best friends? It's not great, is it? So I said, you can't deal with me. You deal with Olivia, uh, my other Olivia. Uh, and I said, you do everything she says or you're gone. So... Here's the thing, okay? Uh, now, what happened to people's wages uh, that were working during lockdown coming out? What, what Did they get cut? They got cut down to 80%, right? So these people here, what he was finding, because we started, there's a really cool thing to do. Um, go to all your competitors and, and start reading and listening to the comments. Go and read all their reviews, good or bad, and go and, and start looking at the comments of what people are writing. We call it active listening. So what we started um, seeing in these comments here, 138 of them, do you do ute finance? You know, we were running ads and it wasn't about utes. 
heaps of people started asking about youths. So what do we do? Started running ads about youths. How are we creating chemistry in that, in that video? What's in the background? A ute. All right? Chemistry. Remember, people who like utes want a ute. All right? This, this video was targeted to males between the age of 18 and 55. They liked hunting and fishing, uh, Ford Rangers, all that sort of stuff that that age group want. And it didn't get targeted to females. It might have got shared to females. It was 40, but it was targeting males. So his theme around that in these videos. The funny part about this, you get heaps of comments too. Oh, that's just a shitty old Nissan. So he comes to me one day. He says, we've got, all the, we've got this issue. He said, cool, be resourceful. Go down to every car yard in Christchurch. Take, take a ute for, for, a, uh, for a test drive. Stand in front of the number plate and shoot the same video six times. And here we go. One theme, different videos, different utes, right? Be resourceful, okay? Now, most people here, when they started talking uh, the, the topic, were talking about interest rates. But we didn't have to talk about interest rates. We had to talk about solving the problem, which was what? My wages are decreased. I'm going to lose my ute. Most of these people that were, had been bought and, they were on at like 18%, you know, and he could get them a deal at like 12. How good's that? You know, all of a sudden he's the hero. So we didn't have to talk about interest rates, which was what most people have to talk about. Most uh, finance companies have to talk about interest rates, and that's what you'll see. So here's the cool thing. 3.2 million video view plays. Is that good or good? That is, that is paid media as well, though, okay? But here's the coolest part. See this? 100% plays. That means people have watched 100% of that video. 24,000 people, nearly 25,000 people have watched 100% of his videos. How good is that? If I put a video on, on, on TV tonight for 1 minute 15, how long before you guys are grabbing your phone? Seconds, right? And that's the power of an engaged media when you do this stuff that you're interested in and then you run paid media to a targeted audience. 24,000 people watch those videos. Minute 15 is average, okay? Created a, a, a business, I think he did about a million dollars in 10 months um, of finance, which is pretty cool. And he just uses digital. Here's the platform that we use though. So I don't have time to show you this, but if you go into your uh, Facebook or Meta account, it's called video views. Set an ad to run at video views, okay? And what will happen, video views retargeting, what you can do is you can build audiences off the back of people watching your videos. It's called consumption-based tagging, which is a little bit nerdy, but when anyone watches a video, they will go into an audience, okay? So Meta will take them, or Facebook will take them. If they watch 100% of the video, they'll go into an audience. If they watch 50%, they'll go into another audience. If someone watches 100% of that video, what, what should I do to those people? Show them another video? Yep. Show them maybe some testimonials of other people that have shopped with us. Because what are those people? Potential clients, right? They're in that mode of buying. They have that same problem. Now they're checking you out. Okay? They're not, you're, not, you're not watching one minute 30 video of a guy standing there talking about ute finance if you're not interested, right? Same goes for you guys. If people are looking for a house or wanting to sell a house or have a problem, they will consume your content. And here's the thing. You have to be prepared to play the long game on this because there's quality people and there's quantity people, okay? Some people will need to see your videos for three years. Ask me how I know this because I've done deals with people and they turn up and go, hey, Scott, I've been watching you for three years. Let's do business. They're quantity. They need to see, and when they're ready, they do business. Other people will just see one video. They'll see the quality and they'll go, hey, what? That, 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 well, let's just do business for them. Cool. You have to be prepared to wait. Um, and it can be frustrating, but I know from experience, if you do, you will win this game because here's what I know. Most people will quit. Okay. So creating those audience, create, and look, this creates chemistry faster, but that's not right. right. Okay. Video, 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 Olivia, you're up. All right. I am, don't know how to use that. So might go forward, might go backwards. I'll just give you a wink. Okay. Um, I'm just hoping that my mic can't hear my heart rate. Please, hopefully it can't. Um, talking about platforms, so we have got our ideas, but we're re-putting them. So even, we've got a pretty good mix of, of age ranges in the room. Put your hands up if you're on Facebook. 
Awesome. There we go. There's a platform that lots of people are on. What about Instagram? Again, more than I was expecting. What about TikTok? Tony. Oh, there we go. Cool. Quite a few. Oh, but what if you have children my age that are on TikTok? Okay, good. There we go. So we've got a few. Yeah. Um, we've also got YouTube and a few other platforms, but those are really going to be your top three where most of the age range that you are looking to target is going to be. So there we go. Nice and easy. Next one. I believe also every agent should be on LinkedIn. Okay. Just from my personal experience. Who's on LinkedIn? Yes. Okay. Start doing neat content on LinkedIn. You're away. Cool. Equipment. All right. A lot of people probably think that you need a whole lot of equipment, which is a whole lot of money to get started. However, Scott's already said, Scott films all of his content with that thing in his hand right now. When we go out on content shoots, sometimes we will bring mics if we're in a workshop, if we're in where there's a lot of noise, or we might have a few um, other little microphones that you just plug in and they're just going to make the audio sound a bit clearer because if you've got cars going back in the background, someone's just going to scroll right past or it's something to hold your phone up to where your face is or to capture your whole body or whatever you're trying to capture. All right, software. I think this is where people probably get a little bit scared the most. How to, once I've taken the video, how do I make it look nice? How do I get it to something that I'm happy to share in front of whoever's going to see it? And I think the biggest takeaway from this is that it's a learning process. I sucked when I started. Scott sucked when he started. So you've got to go through that period of not being the best to acquire that skill to get better. So for example, once you've taken the video on your phone or on a camera or whatever, we use CapCut as a nice and easy app on your mobile that you can use. And it's got lots of different, um, I guess, tools that you can use to cut your videos up if you end up swearing or making a mistake in the middle. Sometimes it happens. Um, or if you are thinking that that's just going to be way too hard, what you can do instead is plan your videos to not need to cut anything. So for example, Scott plans what he's going to say and he hits go, says what he needs to do, hits finish, and then that's his video ready. When I'm heading out to go take videos of clients, sometimes they can be really nervous on camera. And so I'm going to coach them through about one sentence at a time. So they're going to be stopping, catching their breath and reading their next sentence in between. But I can then edit, using CapCut, edit those bits out so they get one continuous flow. So there's two different ways if you're, you know, easy, if you find it easy to string a whole sentence together, or if you find it a little bit hard, then you can actually just make it easier for yourself by using CapCut. Um, we have also got, there's some new software coming out. Um, we use one called Munch as well that you can, you can take a whole video if it's 10 minutes long. No one's going to sit there and watch 10 minutes of you unless they are super interested or they're your mum. Um, but what you can do is you can throw that video into Munch and it's going to take, it's going to take, you can choose how many videos you want out of it. It might be 10 and it's going to give you 10. You can choose how long you want them. So optimize for social media might be between 15 seconds and 30 seconds. And it's going to pull out those bits so you don't have to do the manual editing. This is, this is AI. Okay. So AI here, we started using this. Oliver actually told me to start using this. When I first started using it, I put in a, uh, I think it was a 16 minute video and, and the content out of it actually sucked. Uh, it was, it, it, it tells you whether it's high coherency or low coherency and they were all low. Uh, and when you tell it what, it, what, what you want the software to do, uh, if you want LinkedIn videos, if you want YouTube shorts, if you want TikToks, it'll give you what you want from that. Uh, we actually had a discussion about it. I said, I'm just going to email them and say, Hey, this sucks. Um, and they wrote back and said, Hey, agree. Um, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, they said, give us a couple of weeks. This AI is getting better. And that's one thing I've really, I've noticed with AI, it gets better and better faster. So actually now, this software is actually really, really good. I put the same video in it, um, probably about a month ago, and it gave me uh, six, uh, eight videos, all cut up, uh, and, and the coherency of it was unbelievable. And like, to get an editor to do that, uh, I showed a, an example where I spent $350 uh, to, to get an editor to do it. Um, and it was a pain in the ass because it took like five hours going backwards and forwards. This took like 30, 30 minutes. So have a, have a go with Munch. It's, it's crazy where this technology is going. And look, good is good enough. You know, 
Uh, you don't, it's not going to be perfect. And if you're worrying about being it perfect, you pay a guy like Brendan or your uh, video guys to do, to do this for you. Okay. Um, another piece of software is InShot. And another good thing you might want to explain, Tulip. Oh, awesome. So same again, if you do find it difficult to get your full sentences out, you can have, we've got, there are heaps of apps out there, heaps of free apps that have got a teleprompter, so you can put your script into that. And so if you were going to use your script, if you've got your 10 ideas, and if you've written your script, you've got that in there, you can film your whole video, say it's going to take you 30 minutes to shoot all of those, put it into months, you've got your 10 videos all done for you. It's, a, it's definitely, there's a few of these coming out now, definitely worth uh, giving them a go. All right, so I just want to have a little chat about how to, I guess, prepare yourself to actually get in front of the camera. Now, we all have a customer service voice on the phone, so you get to, you're going to need to develop a bit of a customer service persona to get in front of the camera. Because, for example, if I'm shooting a video, I'm not going to go, hi, I'm Olivia from Digital Influence, and today I'm going to talk about whatever. You want to make it, I'm Olivia from Digital Influence, and I'm going to teach you three things that you need to know about your auction day. And that's a whole lot more engaging than being a little bit monotone. And the other thing that you need to be creating the videos for who you're selling to. And it's not for everyone in this room, not you trying to sound the best to impress everyone else. It's the person who doesn't know what the inside of an auction room looks like or, you know, how the process works or what the aftercare is after, you know, how the process is. So it takes, you've, to make them comfortable, you've got to be over the top when you're in your delivery. So on the same, I guess, topic of having that persona when you come on, uh, the attention span on social media is going to be about three seconds that you've got someone to hook their attention. And that can be done in different ways. So you've probably seen, you know, people that do silly things like, dancing none of our clients need to do that no, no one you don't need to dance to get views or attention or to build to build leads or to get clients but it, what they're doing is using a hook whether it's visual or what they're listening to so instead of saying hi I'm Olivia from Digital Influence that's about the three seconds they don't care who I am where I'm from but what you can do is I'm going to just start your video I'm going to give you three tips to make your auction day as easy as possible or here's one industry myth that you probably don't know about. Or anything. You start with the hook and then you can introduce yourself afterwards. Or you can end the video with, oh, by the way, I'm Olivia from Digital Influence. And then the other one is more of a visual hook where um, you can, I guess, capture attention by changing outfits if you're going to be um, doing the editing part. Or you can just in and out of the shot so a few things that are just eye-catching to catch someone's attention and I guess stand out from the hundreds of videos that they're probably watching that day awesome thank you Olivia give her a hand eh? so to win at this game I said you've got to go long term right most people won't most people will quit that's your opportunity you've got to have consistency of message consistency of your messages here auction day experience auction ready benefits of an auction be consistent in doing this, 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 and these topics. Consistency of message. Most people quit, okay? Then you must have frequency of reach, okay? You need to get in front of people again and again and again and again. Remember I talked about this quality and quantity. You just have to get out in front of people again and again. Use paid media to extend that reach, okay? But you must have frequency of reach. The cool thing is, McDonald's and Coke had to spend a ton of money to get in front of people, okay? You don't actually have to spend that much money because you're only targeting a certain area, okay? But you've got to have frequency of reach. Because here's the thing, you must build relevancy. Consistency of message plus frequency of reach to create relevancy. You can't control when you become relevant to someone. Well, actually you can by showing up with consistency of message and frequency of reach. They might not be in the market to buy or sell a house right now, but if you're the person that keeps showing up, showing up, showing up, and, and all of a sudden you become relevant to them, hey, we should give that person a call because they, we see them all the time. They give all these really good tips for free. I wonder what they could do for us because all of a sudden you become relevant to their situation. Okay? So consistency of message plus frequency of reach to create relevancy. 
as always, I lead with one thing. Look, knowledge is power, but action is the key to your dreams. Uh, you didn't come here for a warm, fuzzy feeling because there's heaps of things you could have been doing this morning. Uh, I want you to take one thing that you've written down today, uh, one thing that you've got, and I just want you to action that, okay? And just do that one thing, okay? Because if you start doing that one thing, all of a sudden you've done 10 things, and all of a sudden you're standing out there in the marketplace. So appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a great day, and uh, we'll hope to see you next time.